Hey everybody, are you ready? I think I'm ready. I'm back here again at the 343 Labs location in New York. Welcome to Techno Saturdays, I'm John Selway. Nice to see everybody uh, in the chat happening here. Who was first today? Looks like it was, yep, Martin Crockett, you're first. Welcome. Uh, who else is in here today? We've got Chris White, Gunther, Pavel is back. Who else? F-Stop, that's a new one. Yo, how's it going? Antoine Guibault, do I get that right? Paul, Paul Vanderwerf, nice to have you back again. Alistair and Silent State, more TV says, yeah, <laughs> yeah, techno and more techno. We're sort of, it's a transition today, starting with some electro elements, but making it techno. That's, that's what's happening today, actually. So yeah, basically techno. Nice. And of course, Thomas from 343 Labs is in the chat. Matster303, welcome from Bristol. And uh, Hank in Hanover is here. Mundelator, Will Joseph, Studio Don Quixote. Emmanuel Morica. Let's see. Nice, uh, nice collection of people in the chat today. Nice to see you here. And um, anyway, of course, this is 343 TV brought to you by 343 Labs Music Production School here in New York City and in Berlin. Uh, we offer online courses and in-person courses and all sorts of different types of uh, subjects relating to music production. I do a synthesis and sound design course here. I also do Ableton Live instruction. We do mixing and mastering. Abe Duque is actually, you know, doing that here in New York. His, his, his class is great. You guys, uh, I would highly recommend uh, signing up with him if that's something you're looking to do. And, you know, right now that reminds me, we are still doing a two for one course sale. So you could sign up you know, for my synthesis and sound design class, if you want to, you know, work closely with me and Abe, I think that would make a nice package, especially if you're uh, a little bit beyond beginner level, right? And you're more in intermediate to advanced. You want to take things a little deeper, but if you're just getting started out, of course, we've got our, you know, our basic production courses, you know, making your first track in Ableton Live, that kind of thing. Um, we do music theory and we do composition and arranging and I think we do logic too. I mean, we got all sorts of, we got all the bases covered or a lot of the bases covered anyway. So think about that while we have the sale on, it's a really good time to jump in. Uh, of course, we also are, we're developing our subscription plan, 343 Studio. Um, that's a lot of fun actually. I'm enjoying doing the collab workshop. Uh, Christian Smith has joined me for a couple of these recently and uh, we're gonna do the, the last one of the month uh, this week on Tuesday. But that's a lot of fun. You can, uh, I don't know if, uh, Thomas, maybe you could uh, indicate at the chat whether we're still accepting uh, applicants for the beta program. So, but anyway, in, in the 343 Studio thing, we got the collab workshop. We've got office hours. We can come, you know, and ask instructors any questions you have. We do feedback sessions. Uh, we do specific workshops for different uh, subjects. I did an electro one uh, last month. So, and actually, I think I have another one coming up. I need to sort that one out. Um, and you know, we're here every, every day, almost, uh, streaming live, sharing with you what we do, uh, growing our community, reaching out globally. Now it's really amazing to see people here from all over the world in the chat. Um, and if you all want to, you know, communicate with each other, communicate with us, we have our discord, uh, set up. The link is there along with our URLs and everything, uh, down uh, in the description. So definitely, if you haven't already, join the Discord, see what's up. We've got sample challenges happening regularly. You can submit tracks for feedback there. You can have discussions with like-minded uh, individuals who are also into music production. And you're going to find someone who's into the style of music you're into. So, all right. Enough business at the top of the hour. Actually, nope, nope. There's one more thing. We're, we have our giveaway. This week, we're sponsored by Sound Toys. And we have a copy of Crystallizer uh, available so this is your last chance to sign up. There's a link here in the chat somewhere uh, if you haven't already joined. And we will announce the winner today towards the end of the hour in the chat and then also announce it on the air. So, right. Who else here is, is Max is here. Great. 99, welcome. 
<laughs> um, Daniel Seidel. Yeah, a few more, a few more people joining in the chat. That's great. And um, so Pavel asked earlier, I think. Let's see if I can find that uh, that question. Scrolling back up, Pavel K two says, "Hey John Selway, today techno or electro or mix?" And sort of a mix actually, because what I decided to do is, um, well, I made a I made an electro remix recently for Tronic Records uh, for an artist named Alexander Kowalski. It's been around a long time. I know him originally from his releases on um, Kanzleramt Records. Really great. See, he did live shows. He, he, I, a lot of my favorite stuff from him was like, you know, kind of musical, nice chords, nice melodies, but sort of still powerful techno. And uh, he was able to, you know, have some Detroit influences, some housey influences, but still, you know, very futuristic and uh, really accomplished producer. So I was happy to uh, be able to do a remix for him. Um, so I recently did an electro remix for him and then I decided, and, and the original is electro. So, and that's actually kind of funny. Like when you're doing a remix, like, should you do the same style or, or your, or your own take on that style or should you do it in a different genre? Um, so, you know, there's no rule there, but changing genres actually sometimes makes it easier because you're not competing in a way like. I think it's a little bit funny when you hear a track and then there's like three or four or five remixes of like, and it's all similar techno. And it really depends on the producer, the artist, like how unique and how well it stands out. But um, so sometimes in that case, it's interesting to change your genre. So anyway, I decided to use that as a starting point today, taking these parts that were originally from an electro track and making it a little bit more you know, steady pumping techno. And I'm still in the, in the sound design slash editing slash composition uh, phase here. So, uh, cool. <laughs> Flocky the Ram says, EDM needs more drugs, less of this sober nonsense. I get in the studio and pass out on the keys from the come down. That's real music. I assume you're, yeah, I, I assume you're, you're taking the piss a little bit there. But um, I will admit that a couple of the best tracks I've ever made were done severely hungover. I'll admit that. When I was younger, when I was less responsible, I'm, I'm much more responsible nowadays, of course. Nice. So, the, so that's, that's where we're starting. Taking these parts from uh, Alexander Kowalski's track, which, was, which is electro, and then making it techno and sort of redesigning it. And then the other limitation is I'm only using the audio, the only using samples from the original. So I'm not, with maybe the exception of some drums, actually I have a, an extra kick and a hi-hat I added, but all of the sounds are based on the audio. So I'm not adding new synths, right? It's all audio slash samples of the parts slash effects and re-manipulating what he was giving me. So, cool. Let's see now. Let's take a listen first to the original parts. Um, a little, let's see, there we go. I, I was just trying to think there for a second how I had this set up, but I've got two groups of tracks. One is the remix stuff, and then the other, or the stuff that I've already worked on, and the other group of tracks is, these are just the parts as they are in the original. And these aren't arranged. I mean, they're laid out here on the timeline there. It's not full stems of the entire arrangement. It's just eight or 16 bar phrases or sections. Um, and that's another thing I think about when I'm remixing. It's, it's common nowadays for, you know, to be provided with stems of the entire arrangement. And that's great when you're doing a song, right? You've got song structure, vocals, and you need the vocals laid out or the melodic elements laid out correctly. Um, but a lot of times when you're doing kind of more loop-based, grooving electronic music, you want to deconstruct it. You want to take it back out of the arrangement and then sort of redo it. Um, at least I prefer that. So a lot of times I don't even start with the, the stems or the parts on the timeline. But 
and let's just check it out real quick. Let's hear what it sounds like as is. Right, so we got eight bars of all the drums and some of the synth stuff, and then there's another extra eight bars of the pads and the vocoder. All right, so nice parts, right? Very melodic. Definitely got that future electro vibe. I mean, it's sort of vintage slash future, right? It's kind of straddling early and modern, I would say. And let's hear some of these parts by themselves, actually. One of the first things I do when I'm remixing is reject parts. If there's something in there, I'm like, I just, nah. <laughs> if I don't love the sound or if I don't immediately get an idea for what to do with it, whether it's a musical idea or a composition, a sound design idea, I'm sorry. Um, it's really, I just, I go off my first reaction. So, all right, this is the, baseline track it's a little quiet let me turn that up a little bit all right very electro-y kind of a sound right it's got that zappy lasers thing on the top it's not very deep bass it's sort of hollow sounding sort of resonant but that's a maybe i'm gonna say that's that part's a maybe um okay and then we have this bells track Sort of bell-like. I like this sound. I'm not immediately getting an idea for how to use it in a techno context. And I also, while I'm listening to these, I'm thinking about, like, where do I want to take the track, like, stylistically? Do I want it to be more stripped down and, you know, beats and effects? Do I want it to still be very musical, just with different a different drum rhythm underneath it? Um, do I want to do like more kind of deconstructed sound design or do I want to leave the synths as they are kind of thing? Um, this one, maybe I could use it if I, if I stay in a more melodic direction, I would use it as is. But also I could like chop it, loop it, take little bits of it, right? I, this one, I feel like I like the tone of it, so I'm definitely going to keep that. All right, let's check out this one, this Blofeld Strings. Oops. All right, that's some nice rich pads. Sounds like it was recorded with sidechain ducking on it. You can hear kind of the level wavering up and down a little bit. So that's kind of that that sequence, that's kind of the main theme of the whole track. I feel like that's an important thing to, to keep. Um, but I don't love how it sounds because of the ducking from the compression. Um, I already, I already kind of know what I want to do with this, and it's, I, I already have it set up from the electro version that I did previously. So I, I actually have that brought into the, into the session. So, all right, and then we have just a simple clap. And that's decent. You know, it sounds like, you know, an 808 sort of clap with some saturation and some reverb. It's a little extra crunchy. Um, you know, there's a million sounds like this out there. Uh, but since we are sticking to trying to use as many of the original sounds as possible and not adding too much, with, the except with, with a couple of exceptions, I, I'm going to just use it as it is. Maybe re take, chop it and then, you know, make a new rhythm out of it. All right, and then we've got... 808 symbol, that's definitely usable, easily usable. We've got a drum loop, which definitely easy to use, and this will work in a techno context as well. Uh, and we've got some more hi-hats, 808 hi-hats, which, again, I could probably chop these up and use a couple of individual slices closed open and make a new rhythm out of it. Uh, all right, 808 kick, along with that hi-hat. Definitely not going to use this rhythm. But again, we're trying to use the sound, so I'm going to leave that. It's basic enough. I can do almost 
Well, I could do a lot, just adding effects to it. I could even turn that into a bass sound with enough distortion and some filters and stuff like that. All right, some more synths. Hmm. All right, so it's that same chord progression, but on a different synth. It's got some rhythmic modulation on there. I could see using that. I feel like I could use this chopped into little stabs or re repeated, or it could be some kind of dubby techno thing easily with like the minor triad that that's playing. So that's definitely going to stay. And then we have... All right, again, it's the same chord progression. This one, I think my first impression is no. I have the other, pa the other pads, the other kind of more rich one, the main one. And I think this, this sound is a little bit too vintage. It's a little, it sounds like a 70s, late 70s, early 80s kind of synth. And I think I want to, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that completely. All right. And then we've got, hmm. Right now, I actually, when I did the electro remix already, I didn't use this one then. So I don't know. I feel like maybe I should try to use it now. Um, but even just one note from this. So this, this could be deconstructed for sure. I can't guarantee I'm going to fit it in today, but we're going to, I'm going to be open to this one. All right. And then we have rim shots. Actually, it sounds like a rim shot along with uh, an, another percussion sound like a hi-hat. I mean, that definitely I can use. Um, I love an 808 snare. Um, depending on the style, I don't hear a lot of that kind of 808 snare in, at least in heavier techno, you don't hear it so much, but it could be used. I would use this maybe rather than a two and the four on the backbeat kind of a snare, I could use it as a, something syncopated probably, like a filling in the beat a little bit. All right, and then we have yet another layer. This is a nicer sound i think this is a maybe but i feel like i already have for a techno track i already have enough synth like pad string kind of synth sounds all right we've got eh i don't love it i'll be honest i used it in, i actually I used this in the in my electro version of, of remix but uh I put a lot of effects on it. I totally turned it into something else. But this time, I think, no. All right, a couple other. Let's just go the rest of these quickly. All right, definitely can use that. Some stabs. That, that with a bunch of reverb on it would be great. That definitely can be used. One more synth stab. Actually, yeah, that's, that could be like a little percussion sound. It's very electro sounding. I'm, that's a maybe. All right, and then of course there's the vocoder. Definitely have to use the vocoder because it's kind of like one of the main elements. Although I, I processed it a lot in my version, my other version, so I'm going to use that one. And then we have some more. I think you guys already know that this for me is like one of the most electro sounds possible. Just that little zap or it's not exactly like the 808 trigger, but it's very similar. So that one, I like it. I love those sounds. It works with techno as well. So Cool. Now that I've gone through all those parts, so like I've already done some of the work here that I was thinking about. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of these extra stems that I put in there so I could show you. And then we'll actually, and then what I ended up doing was instead of, like I said earlier, work, instead of working on the timeline, I have everything in the session view and I'm working to sort of re-edit, recreate, resynthesize, effects process, and make a whole new thing out of it. Cool. So that's where we're at. Wow, that already took a bunch of time just to go through the parts. Um, so let's see what I've got here. All right. Oh, I should also mention, mention because we're doing the giveaway of Crystallizer, I, I'm trying to incorporate, I'll be honest, I don't use Crystallizer all that much, so I'm curious. Like, okay, this is what we're giving away this week. Let's see what it can do. So I'm playing around a little bit with Crystallizer. It's pretty much 
a pitch shifting granular delay. So it, it's similar, a little bit similar to what you can do with the uh, uh, live's grain delay, actually, just with some extra different tone, different modulation possibilities, that kind of thing. All right, let me just turn that off for a second. So that's the original bass line. Got it EQ'd and I'm just trying to make it a little bit more crunchy, dirty, less of a bass, more of a synth sound in the middle. And then I was experimenting with make just totally destroying it with crystallizer. All right, so because I'm trying to do a techno thing, the I, I set sort of the flavor for myself. The, the two sounds that I added to this that aren't in the original are a kick drum and a hi-hat. Just so I have, I, I'm like, I want, it, I want it to be pumping. You know, I want it to have that kind of heavy rolling techno beat, right? So I've got a highly compressed, tight, very modern kick, right? Um, it actually has more of that sort of, the sample has more of this sort of rumbly reverb in it. But I'm decaying it out just so it's a little tighter sounding. That plus just your basic kick and open hi-hat. So it's definitely going to be a strong techno groove underneath all these more electro-oriented sounds. And then I decided to take a small loop from this bass and repeat it uh, uh, so it's less syncopated, so it's more driving. Sort of more jacking like that. Not loving it. Right, I'm exploring what I can do with Crystallizer. I just started with, it, you know, it said techno loops. So I figure I'm trying to make techno. Why not start with that? It's okay. It's doing this metallic thing. Um, let's see if I can get it tighter, right? It's very ringy. Uh, this thing has a gate and a duck built in, so you can kind of move the effect out of the way or chop chop it up a little bit. So I'm gating it now. The splice control is the granular part of it. It's repeating stuff. Recycle, I guess, is kind of like feedback. And then, you know, it's a stereo effect. You can offset the left and the right values. All right. So that's a maybe. Let's see what else I got going on. A lot of parts to play with, to be honest. All right. Another idea I had was making the vocoder, instead of it having be just like occasional words on top, having the using it like a synth, looping it, maybe chopping it. So this is where I started. Sounds good with some delay on it.
I'm just moving the loop around to hear how different parts of the vocoder sample work with the groove. And it becomes less like, you know, I can't understand what it says anyway. Um, it's definitely a vocal of some kind running through the vocoder. But I'm, de you know, I'm trying to take it out of context and use it as a repetitive synth part. Any one of these could be good. I kind of like it when it's more broken up. It's quite bright. I'm using, um, this was kind of a trick. I used the spectral resonator to kind of resynthesize the vocoder to make it sound more vocoder-y. This is how it sounds without it. That actually sounds cool too. Here's with the resonator. The zaps going on. So that's the original drum loop. Actually, it sounds like this. And I decided I wanted to get rid of that little high-pitched note in there. So I have a, a copy of it. And this is, this is an easy thing that I do all the time with loops is I just use the uh, uh, volume automation to cut out part of it, just to chop it up a little bit. And it's creating a rhythmic variation. And actually, if I want to, it's a little empty now, I can fill it in with a delay. I like that. Let's hear what it sounds like, just the groove. Hmm. With or without the delay. Actually, it's good chopped too, like that. All right, now here's the snare and Normally it would sound like this. But I'm just going to offset it by a 16th note. All right, I like that. It's again that rolling kind of a vibe. And as far as the original kick, now, I've, you know, I'm using a, my own kick sample for the main four on the floor kick, but um, I decided to use the fast syncopated part of the 808, original 808 kick to make a rumbling kind of in between. So that ended up sounding like this. I haven't processed it yet, but basically, you know, that's the original pitch. Together with my kick. But I don't want, I, I wanted it to be a little bit more distinct, so I raised the pitch a little bit. And then, you know, maybe I'm going to use some distortion to make it more dirty, more thick. Let's try. It's giving it some tone, actually. What happens if I use the hard curve? Too much. I feel like that hi-hat needs some effects on it. All right, now it's, now we're pushing. I'm gonna go back to this guy. I'm gonna see if I can make this, this fit. It's, 
it's, I don't like it now. It sounded better earlier before I started streaming and now I messed it up. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's go through some presets. Let's just see what happens. kind of cool is just a background effect. I wouldn't I wouldn't use that as a main sound. But the, that's another fun thing that the crystallizer does is it alternates backwards and forwards the echoes. Anyway, I feel like I'm not I was on the fence about this sound in the beginning. I feel like it might I might it might be time to just say, "Eh, that's not going to be what we're going to use today." Let's take a moment now that we're at the halfway point. See how the chat's doing. Catch up. See if there are any questions. Of course, you are watching 343 TV. My name is John Selway. And uh, if you haven't joined the giveaway, we're, we're, we've got uh, the crystallizer from Sound Toys that I've been trying to make work with this bass sample. Uh, so join in there uh, if you want to have a chance to win. There's a link in here somewhere. And uh, we're going to announce this very shortly, who the winner is. This is pretty much your last chance if you haven't already joined. And um, all righty. Craftworky. Shen says craftworky. Yeah, I'm trying to make it less craftworky now. We're starting with an electro track, which obviously all electro... 99% of electro comes from Kraftwerk and it's their influence <laughs> on music. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of Kraftwerk-esque elements that I'm trying to kind of de-accentuate that and make it more modern, tough techno. Uh, but of course, I love mixing electro and techno as well. That, that's always, you know, if that's where we end up going to, that's fine. Cool. Hey, William Mind Readers, nice for you, nice to join you. Nice, nice of you to join. <laughs> I, I think I might need to eat lunch. I'm feeling a little spacey today. Uh, Alto Voltage, nice, cool name. And I see you guys are having a discussion about session view versus uh, versus arrangement view. And Shen asks, would you recommend session view to a new producer who only learned Ableton and arrangement view? Um. I mean, first of all, there's no rule that you have to use one or the other. Um, that's one of the nice things about live is it gives you that choice. Of course, live was originally designed as a live performance application, like taking a sequence. It's a, a live performance sequencer that became a DAW, a more fully featured DAW. So, um. I think you should work where you're comfortable. I work in, I start in session view, especially for this kind of music, because I want it to be nonlinear. I want it to be looping endlessly. I'm trying to create a hypnotic groove. The groove is paramount, right? So like whatever happens in the space of a bar or two sets the tone. And then when I'm ready to arrange it and to make, to fix it in time, I switch over to, to, to the arrangement view. So I think you should be ultimately comfortable working in both and you can use them for different reasons. So hopefully that helps. Of course, if you want to learn, I got to do the plug. If you want to learn more about Ableton Live in a deeper way, you could uh, check out what we have on offer at 343 Labs. And we have our two for one course special going on right now. Two courses for the price of one. Um, it's an incredible bargain and I would highly recommend it if you're thinking about doing a deeper dive and you want to take some classes and really get in with an instructor who knows this stuff. And I feel like those of us who work with 343 three, three, Labs pretty much know what we're talking about. I'd like to you know, pat, pat ourselves on the back there. Thank you very much. Nice. Um, who else is here in the uh, Mickey or M-I-K-A-E? Reminds me of a Blawan tune. If I come off sounding like that, I love that guy's stuff. He's one of the, he's a very unique producer. So if I have even like a little tiny bit of, of that, I'm happy. That's fine. Not that I want to copy, but I'm, I'm into that stuff. So that's very nice. 
cool. What else is going on here, Simple Sam? Oh, that's right. Um, Max was asking where I got the stems. And again, these are these parts are from a remix of Alexander Kowalski uh, that I did recently. And uh, I actually shared these with our collab workshop a couple weeks ago. And I'm very curious to find out. I haven't really heard what they did. I've heard one of them. But I definitely I need to go in and check those out before we have our final, uh, our final session coming up on Tuesday. Nice, and thanks, Simple Sam. Glad you like the kick drum. <laughs> Flocky the Ram. What pitch shifting granular? Yes, yeah, that it's really nice. Uh, I think I feel like Crystallizer is a bit of a sleeper. I will admit that pitch shifted delays. It, it's a sound and it's very, it stands out and it's very easy for it to be too much. Like running through some of these presets on certain sounds, you're like, okay, another crazy pitch thing, right? But used, used carefully, right? And subtly, it's a very powerful effect. Or also if you just want to go crazy and experiment with it, it's really good to deconstruct stuff and make new things out of it. So absolutely. I suppose we should get back to the music now that we have done our check-in halfway. And of course, if you guys have any more uh, questions or anything, feel free. Uh, as I say that, there is one question. I'll acknowledge that before we dive back in. John Ruperti uh, asks, what do I think about Reason Studios? Reason is awesome. Um, I have an older, a couple of versions, a couple of versions ago, and I've downloaded a newer demo. I mean, there's so many good instruments and effects. And if you like combining and layering and, and doing complex effects processing, and it, that's one of the best things about Reason has always been this kind of rack thing and that you can decide how things are plugged in together. You, it, it, it's, it's a workflow that works for a lot of people. Um, I never really got into it as a, as a DAW, as a sequencer, but I have quite a few times used sounds from Reason. It, I, would use, I used to run Reason together via rewire with Cubase and Nuendo, actually, and then later Ableton Live when that was possible. Um, and a lot of times I would just you know, send MIDI out from the DAW, play the synths, put some effects on it, and then route that back into my DAW and capture that as audio and then incorporate that into my tracks. Now, though, you can run Reason as a plugin in any DAW. So it's just a huge sound design environment. And I think that's amazing. So yeah, I highly recommend it. And let me just give a plug. There's a DJ and producer named Lag, L-A-G. Uh, I think he's Commissar Lag on Twitch. And... He is, he's a really great techno producer and he is a reason expert. So I would highly recommend you check out some of his live streams if you want to see some music like we're doing today uh, in the context of that DAW. Nice. Okay. Back to work. Where were we? <laughs> I love it. It's like we're 40 minutes in and we've got kick drum, hi-hat, and looping 808 rolling bass. I'm going to try this one again. I like it better. Simple. Just those two little... Clap. Now I ended up making, I just took the clap and put it in a sampler and just played a new rhythm. Easy. We have our drum loop from before. I might cut some more out of that. Better. Stripping it down.
All right, so these are the original 808 kind of groovy hi-hats. Not sure about these. Maybe even just, I mean, I don't need like eight bars of this. If I, just using 16 notes, if I loop it, offset it so the louder one is the upbeat. That's that's more the rolling groove we want, right? It doesn't need to be too syncopated and changing all the time. I'm not even sure about where the downbeat should be. I, I might change that later. All right, so now I, I need to figure out what to do with some of these synth parts. I feel like the 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 basic sort of banging beat is together. Let's play around with some of the synths. I like this, but it's also a little bit messy somehow in this context. I, it worked great in the original. Um, I think I just want to isolate part of this, right? So I made a, a new MIDI track and dragged that sample into the simpler. And I'm just uh, playing part of it here. And that, just a little bit of it sounds good. And then with the filter, I have velocity controlling the filter frequency so I can play around with it a little bit. But I want velocity off of volume so it doesn't go too quiet. Let's put a compressor on this, keep it loud. getting dubby now, isn't it? Let's see how it sounds. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, those chords don't need to be in there. Hmm, something about the, the kick drum tuning is bothering me. Let's lose that for a second. getting housey. <laughs> Sometimes the sound will just take you there. What do you guys say about this sound? Is it going the right way? Hmm. No Lambda says the 808 hats, it's offset. I don't feel it. Hmm. Really? Let's get, I'm just curious, let's get the open hi-hat and all the other percussion out of there. Uh, you know, the clap is what I feel is, an, is off right now, to be honest. That sounds tight. But, you know, maybe we don't want to have it that, you know, maybe we just want to keep it more simple. Like, uh, maybe that is better, it's tighter.
sound card is lagging today. It's like uh, the buffer's high. Kind of like it darker. All right, let's make this more of a two beat loop, a little more repetitive, a little more hypnotizing. That's better already. Finding that hit that groove with the the right groove for the sound. What happens if we modulate the filter a little bit? That's better. It's percussive. All right, I'm gonna put the the 808 rolling thing back in and tune it so it fits. It doesn't, it's too much, right? All right, I wanted to talk about this too, like how to make these strings. Like, this is gonna be like, there's gonna be a break. I forgot to turn off the, the 808 offset comment. Um, this is, I'm not gonna have these big strings in all the time, like sustaining. I want most of the track to be stripped down, drums, a couple of things, you know, not too chilled out and melodic, and then have a big statement with the the main chords in a break and then go back to just the beats but you know i mentioned how these kind of they sound nice but they're wobbly right they're like floating up and down floating up and down because of the side chain compression or whatever is going on with that sound and what i did and i did the same thing in my electro mix of this is i took that sample and put it in a granular synth and I was able to make it sort of resynthesize it and make it sound full and wide and clean and stronger. So that I, I used pigments for that. Pigments is like really great, uh, powerful synth. We already know it, it can do wavetable and subtractive, and uh, it's it's also got a sampler and a granular sampler. In addition to now they have uh, uh, additive as well with the harmonic one. But so that's that's. That's the sample from the original. This uh, from from it's from a Waldorf Blofeld, great synth, and this this is what I turned it into basically. Like compare that to this. Oh, let's solo it. Same sound, right? But without the little 
It's maybe it's gating or something to make it sound more rhythmic. It's got a rhythm to it. So I wanted it to sound more full and bright. So I'm just using, there's a little bit at the beginning. You can see the, the grains bouncing around in there. And what's really nice is that at the very beginning of the sample, there's like the, the tail end of another chord that's at a fifth higher. And so it's mixing in some of those higher notes. All right. And then from then on, I mean, it's the, it was really easy to put that together. All I did was adjust the, the sample start position and the grain position and the density, high density, makes it sound really rich like that. And then we can filter that. Let's hear how it sounds. Let's mute the the chord stab thing that I just made. I like the sound of that. The, the, the sound engine in Pigments is great, and especially using the granular, it's taking all those little pieces of the sample and spreading them out in stereo. It's really sweet sounding. Cool. Let's check in a little bit with the chat, see how we're doing. <laughs> Absent likes the 808 hi-hats. We all have our different, uh, <laughs> we all have our different uh, uh, tastes. Um, Alistair says, I'd slap a trance gate on those strings. But then that would make it trance. Actually, I don't mind a little trance. And I know nowadays it's kind of nice and nostalgic, to, especially to hear some of the stuff from the 90s. But I'm curious. Let's see. How would this sound, now that you mention it, how would this sound with... Uh I mean, there's a million different ways to do this. The old school way would be sending like a drum trigger to a gate to open up to play uh, a rhythm. Nowadays, we have plugins that can do rhythmic gating effects. Um, I could do it in the synth. Uh, the easiest way, though, I'm going to do the fast and easy way, and that is an auto pan. Oh, I'm going to turn Soothe on. That's taking up a lot of CPU power. Or turn Soothe off, sorry. So we're going to sync this. We're going to make the phase zero. We're going to make it a downward sawtooth. We're going to make the amount all the way up. And now we have our trance gate. Although I, I think if, it was, if I was using a hi-hat and it was going sh doing the short long thing, that would be a little bit more 90s style. But how does that sound together? out of sync. Let's put it in sync. You know, you're kind of you're giving it that that fast rhythm. It's still atmospheric. It doesn't sound as big though when you do that. It sounds sort of more reduced and in the background with the gate, or with the now I'm using the auto pan to chop it up. But nice idea. I will think about that. Cool. I know you didn't see what I just did there, but you heard it. Um, what else is going on in the chat here? No lambda says. 
never stepped upon about, <laughs> came upon <laughs> a granular synth, good for harmonic purposes too, with some crossfading between the chords and the audio source. Absolutely, that's exactly the thing. Uh, if you you know, go into a granular synth and you uh, put in a sample that has m different notes or different chords, you can mix it all together and create new harmonies. It's really it's really nice. And uh, finally, yes, it is time to announce our winner. Congratulations to Paul, aka A Paul A Paul Music. You are the winner of the Sound Toys Crystallizer plugin. Congratulations! Very nice. Everybody, give it up for Paul. And um, cool. Do, do Gunther, are you saying that the gate is awful? Which part is awful? Maybe the gate, right? It kind of takes away the, the 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 power of the sound in a way. Cool. And yes, uh, Alistair, exactly. That 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 whole synth thing with the granular the pads is it's really for a break. It's not going to be in all the time. You know, once I get down to arranging this, if if I get down to arranging this, and uh, nice. We've got a few more minutes, two or three more minutes. I'm just gonna go through this again. I know I've got more work to do, obviously, but in terms of like what I actually accomplished on the stream today, we got, I like the beat. The beat is there. And I'm having second thoughts about looping the vocoder like that. I mean, it's cool. I could make a whole track just out of that, you know, modulating the sound and playing around with it. But it might also be cool to just have it stab here and there. Like, even if it were just, like, through a huge reverb. And le leaving it to space out. All right, you know what I think I'm going to do? Let's do this. Let's slice that vocoder. So let's drop that in into the live simpler, right? And now I'm, I can hit these. All right, of course, it needs all of this on it. I'm going to take the same effects I have from the other track, copy them over after that simpler. Right, and then we need that's cool just having those be sort of like stabs every now and then so another idea for deconstructing it a little bit Can move these transients around That could be fun. I won't go into the rabbit hole now, but you can hear sort of the possibilities of just making a new sequence by chopping that. Um, it could just be random even. But that's going to be good, especially a little bit of delay and the occasional... Okay. All right, I feel like I got a pretty good start. It's two o'clock. That is all the time we have today. Thanks to everybody in the chat. Congrat congratulations again to our winner, to Paul for uh, getting the Sound Toys Crystallizer. And um, some nice comments today, some good questions. Sorry I didn't get to everybody, but yes, thanks. I agree, there are some cool sounds in there. I've got a, a good starting point for a new mix should I decide to complete this. So, nice. Thanks everybody once again. Uh, stick around this week. Come back on Monday for Merrily, and I will see you next time.
Adios.